only been in Alaska for 36 years, but I spent 14 of those years working on Alaska oil rigs and exploration rigs. I've seen up close and personal how it works and doesn't work. I'm not anti-development and I'm not making an emotional plea. I'm for rational decisions. From my observations, oil and gas production in the Alaska OCS is not a rational decision. During my time working on the offshore oil rigs, we generally operated with little impact to the local environment. However, I personally witnessed two well blowouts on production platforms right here in the Brooklyn, about 50 miles from this room. In May of 1985, the grayling platform was disabled by a major blowout. In December of 1987, the steelhead pack platform blew out and burned offshore in Cook Inlet. Both of these blowouts were attributed to human error. I also walked the beach in Prince William Sound after the Exxon Valdez spill, and we all remember how well that turned out. A noteworthy blowout occurred in 1979 in the Gulf of Mexico. It took nine months before it could be brought under control. And in the end, it released 13 times the amount of crude oil that the Exxon Valdez spilled. The estimated release was 147 million gallons. The oil slip covered 5,500 square miles. The simple fact is that equipment breaks and people make mistakes. Nobody wants oil spills, but you might ask any of the oil companies testifying before, here, before you here if they can guarantee zero oil well blowouts or no major crude oil spills uh, over the lifetime of the proposed lease areas. The plain fact is they can't guarantee it. You know it and we know it. They know it. 